We are about to turn this over to Denis Manzer, who is going to be sharing with us how to create fermented hot sauce. All right, I'm going to get the video started here. Yeah, thanks again, Julie. All right, okay. We'll just do a quick little transition over. Denis is getting himself ready. He's got his microphone on. <laughs> yeah, there we go. That's right, yeah. So far, everything has been really fun. Um, you know what impresses me the most about this whole uh, project and this whole festival has been your photos when people are actually taking this into their own hands. That your photos of your lemons everyone made after Roni's class. I don't know, it just makes me so happy and pleased. Hey, let's it's true. I mean, that's the, the proof is in the pudding of, of, of this whole experience working that, you know, putting it into action, making those recipes, making it happen. And uh, yeah, You're continue. So proud of <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Proud, everyone. Yeah. And of course, if you're not on the Facebook group, you, you can send me uh, your pictures too of the ferments. I'll post them up there. And uh, yeah, we got a great little, little group going here. So yeah, absolutely. We want this, you know, that it, it's what blows my mind is how easy all these recipes are. For sure. You know, of course there's, there's nuance, you know, like J Julie's was a great example of kind of learning the basics, but you know, where you can take it in terms of, you know, flavors and styles, uh, it's really just, just to the limit. And, you know, I've, I've said it before and I'll, I'll say it again that, uh, you could do another ferment every single day for the rest of your life. May you live a long, 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 healthy, wonderful life and still have more to experiment with, more to try, different variations. Uh, it's an incredible enriching experience. Uh, and, and what a craft, you know, like I, uh, I know individuals that they've been longtime customers of Light Cellar and they had, they had arrangement within their family, kind of a more traditional style in terms of, uh, you know, the wife, you know, was primarily responsible for uh, making the food for the family. He worked long hours, you know, very busy and uh, that worked for them, you know, for, for the longest time. And then when the kids left home, uh, you know, they continued on with that relationship and, you know, he barely ever went in the kitchen until he came to my fermentation class <laughs> and uh he, he got the ticket because she bought it for him he was like, you know like i think i think you're gonna enjoy this and uh, so he showed up and she reported back just a couple weeks later just that he has not left the kitchen and that he is you know his, the kitchen looks like a science experiment laboratory right There's, he's got this going on and he's got that going on and uh, sometimes it just takes that one thing to to find your craft, to find your passion. And this is so key for us, you know, in this day and age where it's just too easy, right? But there's another customer I know, uh, Bachelor, right? For for years, and and in his head, it was always much easier and he justified it in terms of cost that it was so much easier to just literally if you want needed dinner let's just go down to the local pub right because he could order whatever he wants okay he pays 20 25 bucks no problem he doesn't have to go grocery shopping he doesn't have to like think about what he wants to eat he doesn't have to make it he doesn't have to do the dishes it was always just so much easier to go to the pub and again it was like something like the ferments that just opened up his world to go like, actually, you know what? I love doing this. This is actually worth getting into. And it became his passion, his hobby, his craft. And so it's not necessarily about, we all need to make every single thing from scratch that we put into our mouth, but we need to do need to make some of it. There's something that's so human that mm -hmm. so deeply connective to who we are as humans to have our hands in making food and ferments are an incredible uh, place to to start or continue that journey and go deeper into it. Not to mention, you know, bonding with children and, and having that as an activity that you can do as a family with your kids. Yeah, it's been really fun having uh, some school groups in the shop here learning how to ferment. They, they're actually so into it. It's so cool to see them absolutely love bacteria 
and uh, the fermentation process is just so fascinating. Yeah, yeah, no, totally. Okay, so we're, we're eight o'clock. Uh, we want to turn this over to you. This is one of your absolute specialties, and uh, we're going to heat some things up here. <laughs> ready to spice up your life. Are you ready? Okay, a little technical difficulty, hence the... How's that going? All right, let us know. I'll stand away so you're not picking up ambient uh, microphone. Give us a... Testing, testing, one, two, one, two. Something, uh... All right. Well, how about, I'll, I'll be your microphone holder. Oh yeah, all right, okay. <laughs> Can everyone hear? Uh... Can everyone hear me loud and clear on that mic? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Testing, testing. One, two, one, two. Okay. Oh, we're we golden. Got it. We got it. Okay. Thank you, our techno wizard, Gestalt. The, our amazing crew behind the scenes here is making this happen, really. It's a, it's a blessing. All right. From the top, let's start again. Mr. Denis Manzer, he's about to turn you on and turn things up. <laughs> oh, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Heat things yeah. up here. All right, fermented hot sauce. Let's get down to it. Okay, who is ready to start on a journey uh, to reclaim a skill? Like, this might give your life a lot of flavor, a lot of spice. We're talking about fermented hot sauce today. This, The reason we really want to make a fermented hot sauce is to be able to get the amazing value of the probiotics this recipe we're going to make together it's one of the best ways that i have found to get probiotics into people especially people that are not really into eating sauerkraut for example my papa he won't touch a sauerkraut with a 10-foot fork but uh, we go through literally I don't know how much hot sauce we go through. So if you know someone in your life that uh, loves hot sauce, this is a great way to sneak that uh, probiotic factor into their lives. So this recipe is actually so easy and so simple. And well, we're essentially going to be pickling peppers together. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Well, so this recipe, we start with pickling hot chili peppers, but you can literally use this recipe to pickle anything. Like this is the way to make your pickled onions or your pickled carrots, or your pickled beets. It's the same recipe. So it's very, very easy. So first things first, you got to get your hands on some nice chili peppers. You can go for fresh. <laughs> These were fresh, uh, <laughs> but they've since dried out a little bit. Yeah, go and get your hands on some nice, uh, you know, jalapenos, cayenne peppers, red chili peppers. It's funny, Alberta is actually, Alberta has one of the greatest uh, producers of chili peppers in the world. Uh, it's one of our most abundant local um, forms of produce. I guess we're growing tons of them in greenhouses. So yeah, this is organic produce of Alberta, local hot chili peppers and i'm going to be adding in a red bell pepper as well so really for this recipe you can balance out the heat you get in the final product by using more or less of the bell peppers so <laughs> i think this one's going to be incredibly spicy <laughs> yeah if you want to t make it a little more tame just use more bell peppers in your recipe or other vegetables as we're going to see here. So 
Chili peppers are actually amazing. You know, no vegetable has spread around the world as fast as chili peppers. It might blow your mind, but in Chinese cuisine, Thai cuisine, Indian cuisine, they did not have chili peppers until the discovery of the Americas. And really, this is one of the great gifts from the new world to humanity. And no other plant spread across the world as fast as chili peppers did. Most likely because of the dramatic medicinal action of this plant. As soon as you get that fiery flavor in your mouth, it's sensational, right? And some could say that you can achieve altered states of consciousness with this plant. Very cool. I believe the origins of hot peppers are from Mesoamerica around Mexico, where those wise, wise Mayans and the people even before the Mayans domesticated this plant. And if you see the, there's actually a wild chili pepper and it's about as big as the size of a, a little raisin. And they've since domesticated them to be bigger and spicier. So my chili peppers here are kind of dry. So I'm just going to use scissors to chop them up. Yeah, you can use fresh and or dried peppers to for this recipe. Let's get it going on here. Whew. So <laughs> I'm already breaking a little bit of a sweat here. And truly, that is the, the miracle, miraculous medicinal power of chili peppers. They will make you sweat. And so the biggest medicinal action of the chili pepper is that it's a circulatory stimulant. It really gets the blood flowing. And this doesn't cause you to, yeah, it can cause you to, it's called breaking the surface tension when you start sweating. Um, this is very good for all sorts of things. Uh, through your sweat, you detoxify a lot. Through your sweat, you can actually cool down. And I know it's funny these chili peppers are so spicy and fiery, but they will actually make you cool right down. And uh, that's why they eat them in Mexico. When you start sweating and sweating, you'll actually start to cool down. This circulatory stimulant action also has um, a tremendous effect on digestion. So it really brings circulation to the digestive system and so it can really enhance your ability to absorb nutrients as well as bring inflammation down and digestive distress. So if you have chili peppers, you're going to be bringing down any kind of inflammation in, a, in your gut after a big, <laughs> maybe a hippie potluck where <laughs> you ate a lot of beans. <laughs> it's important to have these chili peppers as part of the diet to to actually be able to digest all those like uh like beans and stuff and i guess that's maybe why they're so popular in in mexican cuisine with all those legumes they love to eat all right Denis, we got a couple of great questions coming in here oh great okay some good questions yeah so there's uh betsy asked you keep the seeds in question mark question mark yeah, I'm keeping the seeds in. I mean, if you, I'm going for ultimate spice here, if you know the chili pepper paste. So after the fermentation is done, you are able to uh, kind of puree, puree them and you can actually strain the seeds out, but I'm going for ultimate spice so that and actually when you when you blend them uh, you don't really see them anymore but you know the chili flakes they're full of the seeds so i'm just going for it but yes if you wanted to you could uh take the seeds out and for consistency uh you'll get a smoother sauce oh, okay so here's our beautiful um dried these were banana chilies so they're actually one of them they're quite spicy so for this recipe i've got a nice 
I've got a nice one of these uh, bale top jars for fermenting in. They're one of my favorites for uh, just fermenting in a jar. They're sweet. So yeah, just get your chili peppers in there. You can add, you can use jalapenos. Huh. Okay, for for that lady, I'll not put the seeds all in there. <laughs> <laughs> she's wondering, okay, she's like, how come your hands aren't burning? So this is a good question. I am immune to spice in some way perhaps i've got a big tolerance so for sure somebody agrees they're like Vinny, he's made of heat that guy <laughs> so now is the fun part and you can actually add any kind of you can add all sorts of things into your hot pickles here so i do love adding garlic at this stage uh to pickle with the peppers you can add all sorts of things um We've got a hot sauce here made entirely from pickled carrots. So there's so many variations on this recipe, but for today, I'm going to be adding these nice uh, little tiny red onions, also local Alberta onions, just for like a little bit of fun. Yeah, um, well, that, that actually is uh, related to a couple of questions that ha had come up, and I knew you were going to get to this. So... Uh, two parts to it from two different questions. Uh, what are your favorite flavor combinations? Oh, yeah. And have you tried tamarind and figs with peppers? Ooh, man. Uh, how hot do you go? Habaneros, <laughs> ghost peppers. What's your Yo. favorite pepper combination? <laughs> yeah. And then the, another question was, what are your favorite forage foods to oh, add to yeah. your pepper sauce? Oh, yeah. These are all like, great questions. Yeah, different peppers can definitely produce different effects. This is my triple fire scotch, pure scotch bonnet puree. And this one is something to be handled with extreme caution. It's really spicy. And so you want to take it easy with that one. So I'm adding these onions to this one. I think it'll take a, it'll cool it down a little bit. I love the sound of adding a little bit of sweetness. Uh, figs and tamarind sound amazing. You know, this is, uh, the sky's the limit on your hot sauce. Some of my other favorite ingredients are, well, anything spicy you can think of. So if you've ever tried Szechuan chili pepper, uh, the Szechuan chili is a very fascinating, uh, well, it's just called Szechuan pepper. Szechuan peppers are fascinating because they're not necessarily spicy in the traditional sense, but they have this mouth numbing effect, but they potentiate the effect of other spicy foods. So if you mix Szechuan pepper with other spicy things, such as garlic and chilies, it actually makes it incredibly more spicy. And that's where you get these the Szechuan cuisine is so famous mm -hmm. what else is yummy well black pepper is yummy ginger is yummy you know all right so as a wild foraged ingredient chris is wondering have you used rose hips in a hot sauce oh well you know i've never used rose hips in a hot sauce this is a good uh you know you would have to potentially sort of peel them you would never want to use the seeds from inside the rose hips due to their effect to cause itchy bum the seeds of the rose hips can irritate your <laughs> digestive tract down there but uh so here's here's one idea i'm thinking of as you're doing this right so you're yeah. going to show us that these peppers are essentially going to sit in a brine uh, one thing you could do is actually, instead of creating a brine out of water and salt, why not a herbal wild forage tea and salt? Oh, that's a great idea. That's a really good idea, Malcolm. Making a tea of the rose hips and using that as the brine would be a great way to capture that flavor. I'm th I've got a few good ideas from that question. Uh, cool. All right. Well, the ideas are, are just flowing. So yeah. Jeff asks, what about fruit? Do you ever add fruit for sweetness? Yeah, that's absolutely a great, great idea. 
I'm sure mangoes would be amazing. I'm I I don't know about bananas, but you might achieve a really cool consistency with that. Yeah, you I absolutely imagine that would be yummy. And we're actually going to be adding a sweet element to this to balance the the fiery the absolute fire we're creating here. Yeah, and then Don is reminding us about one of our I think just best ever hot sauces we've ever oh, made, yeah. which is the sea buckthorn hot sauce. Oh yeah, the sea buckthorn fruit was something we added to one. Hey Malcolm. Yeah, sea buckthorn good. puree from Soulberry. These onions are giving me trouble. It means they're good. But yeah, I'm gonna chop these up pretty fine just so that the finer the surface area you get, the the faster it's gonna ferment for one thing, but also in the end it'll be easier to blend it up. Mm, yeah, onions are one. You could do pure pickled onions, and they're actually delicious. That was my idea, actually, with these little babies. Red onions. We'll get them in there. Yeah, garlic, of course, is not for everyone, but I often add garlic in here. Let's see. Yeah. And I'll show you, well, the sauce I have ready to blend has a very interesting ingredient from my garden. So you're going to enjoy that mystery. What, what strange thing did I add from my garden into the hot sauce we're going to make? But yeah, literally the sky is the limit, everyone. This is something that is so nice about these recipes. You can just use whatever you have on hand, such as these onions. I just had them sitting around. All right. All right. So we've got uh, Chris letting us know that this week uh, they made a fermented hot sauce with papaya and habanero and chipotle. Ooh, and the texture yeah. turned out like a delicious spicy jam. Okay. Amazing. Amazing. Oh, man. That makes my mouth water. Yeah. Well, and then to go, there's, guys. there's even more ideas here. So adding the fermented hot sauce to flavor the cheese that we just learned how to create. Yo. Yeah, I'm kind of sad the the glow food lady was going to be here tonight and I was very excited to do dip some in there. Okay, so next up I've got just a really nice organic bell pepper and I'm going to be using this for a very important purpose in this pickle. And basically I'm going to be creating a cap for the pickle. Uh, I don't want anything in my brine to float to the surface. So this is going to create, um, yeah, a cap, a capuchon that it's going to prevent anything from floating above the level of the brine, which that's where you can have mold and yeasts happening if anything goes above the brine. So you see how I've created a cap with this beautiful red pepper, and I am going to be adding this into my hot sauce in the end. Oh, oh, oh. So there we go. There we go. Looking yeah. good. So for those of you that were concerned about the level of heat <laughs> that uh, Denis was making, yeah, this is also another little trick here. So A, yes, you can remove the seeds and choose less spicy peppers, but yeah. you can also do a combination of uh, sweet bell peppers and spicy yeah. peppers. You could add as much sweet bell pepper as you want to make. like It just turns into a yummy fermented bell pepper puree why not you can even roast them before you pickle them and you'll get that really yummy roasted pepper sauce okay so next step we are going to create the brine so it's so easy literally this is how you pickle any vegetable so i've got a liter of water and my recipe and i'm tried and true is two tablespoons of salt per liter of water. So we've got one tablespoon, two tablespoons. You always want to create your brine outside of your jar of pickles because we have no idea how much volume has been displaced by these vegetables. So you stir it up. This is where you can put some magic and enchantment in there. I guess these are enchanted pickle peppers, it's true. So we want this salt brine, two tablespoons of salt per liter. 
to be rising above all the vegetables in here. So it's super easy. You can you don't have to use bell peppers to make your cap. I always I love using like actual leafy greens. So I might have added a little too much here because next I need a weight. So we do have these amazing things called the pickle pe pebbles, these glass weights here. And they're, they're really nice because they have a low profile. But honestly, one of my favorite things to use are these little jam jars, these little mason jars. And they fit right in. Oh, perfect. It's perfect. So I'm going to close this. And I'm actually going to keep it in a room temperature place. You don't want it to be too hot. You don't want to put it on top of your fridge. If you put it on top of your fridge, you are going to most likely get yeasts forming. You want it to be room temperature. Apparently, these jars burp themselves. I haven't been brave enough to put this to the test. So for the first few weeks when fermentation is very active, I come and every morning I'll burp it. I'll let the gases escape. Let's see, this one is good. That one's good. But yeah, I'll burp it every morning and every night. You do want to keep this in some sort of shallow bowl or a tray or a plate because fermentation gets really excited and you can have an overflowing of the brine and this can be especially troublesome if you're playing with beets or something colorful like that. Beets uh, add a really cool color to these things too. So, oh wow, what a beautiful thing. We got our red onion, red bell pepper, and banana pepper hot sauce on the way. Well, these are the pickles. So I'm going to let this sit. You know, peppers ferment very rapidly. So you can even do it for seven days, but I generally like to let it go 14 days, two weeks. If you have any sort of formation of the white yeast called cam yeast, do not be alarmed. Everything under the brine is fine. So you can, I really, I'll just use a paper towel, scoop it, we'll absorb it into it, and it's nothing to worry about. Everything under the brine will be fine. Oh, so there's my beautiful pe pickled pep peppers. Uh, mm, so there's going to be a glorious hot sauce in about two weeks. So ch let's check out what what I've got here for the next step. Is everyone ready for to check it out? So this is what I've had pickling for about, this has actually been gone for about a month pickling, fermenting. But everyone is clear on this first process. It's so easy, right? Just a salt brine. So there was a question. Um, Lydia says, so you'd want to keep it sealed when fermenting or would a loose lid work? Yes. No, you don't want to, you want the lid to be very loose because it can, it can be explosive. So if you're fermenting in a mason jar, it's really easy to just keep the lid on super loose. If you have fruit flies, you just put a cheesecloth over that with an elastic. You could maybe take the ring off. People say that these jars burp themselves, that they let the gas escape. I haven't been brave enough to try yet. But yeah, in fermentation, you it can be very explosive. So be careful. I burp my jar at least once a day, twice a day if it's really actively bubbling. All right. Chris is getting excited and he's asking, is fermented ketchup a thing? Similar process? Question yeah, mark. Absolutely. We've, we've done a few fermented ketchups with sun-dried tomatoes. Very yummy, very umami. My other favorite fermented ketchup was just with beets. We had these fermented beets that 
I forgot about them for like four months or something. And by the time I observed them, they were so soft and tender that it just dawned on me, why not make a sauce of them? So fermented beets, 100% made the closest thing I've ever had to ketchup that I've made myself. So, all right, let's take a look at our, at the creation here. So who's, is everyone ready for the next step here? It's so easy and so much fun. So what do we got here? It's my beautiful ferment. It looks good that nothing weird has occurred. You know, there's no yeasts or anything. So what? who can guess what this mysterious thing in my pickles is? <laughs> I, I bet you might be able to guess. I've actually gotten here green tomatoes from my garden. So when the frost came, I still had tons of little green tomatoes. And what can you do with them? I, I decided to try to pickle them. So there's my cap of the big, that's my uh, bell pepper cap. We're going to blend that right into the hot sauce too. Might as well get my blender here going. The trusty Vitamix. These things are sweet. So you've got your red bell pepper cap. Get it in there. Oh, yeah. It turned out so perfectly. And then, yeah, here's all our green tomatoes. They turned out really nice. Let's get them in there. Woo! All right, I'm already starting to sweat. So I guess I left the stems on these peppers, so I'm going to take the, the stems right off. Yeah, check that out. So we're going to want to drain all the brine. You don't need all the brine from the, the pickles. This stuff is going to be, this stuff is so yummy by itself, though. So there's our uh, pickled peppers. I'm just going to take these stems off. Be careful when you're done this process uh, not to touch your eyes or anything <laughs> or other places. I've had some, I've learned my lessons. <laughs> All right. Yeah, somehow I completely forgot to take these stems off when I was... I think I just thought they looked pretty. Add those in there. My mouth is watering. That's one of the beautiful benefits of this process. This is a mouth-watering condiment. And part of that, it's from the sour flavor. When the human body smells sour, it actually causes you to salivate. So when you, and I'm sure you've all had this experience too with hot sauces, your mouth... <laughs> You just have so much water in your mouth all of a sudden. And this actually allows us to digest our food better too because the more saliva you have while you're eating, the saliva is... A, in, in salivation is actually one of the ways that we digest starches. We, we need to insalivate our food more than we do. <laughs> but that's what we're doing with this mouth-watering chili sauce. Okay, I got a few stems on my tomatoes. Mm -hmm. Do you guys think I should just taste one of these and see what it's like? I'm curious. It's this not... is my first time. Oh, man. That's freaking delicious. All right, I'm not going to use all these in my hot sauce. I'm going to save a few just like that. Mmm. Well, that's amazing. Okay, don't fill your blender too full of uh, all these pickled green tomatoes. Uh huh. Ho, 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 ho. This is really special to me. That's a, this is another one of these benefits of fermentation is that this is from my garden. And these plants, these tomato plants were my friends all summer. 
I would sit, say hello. I would sing them songs. So this green tomato hot sauce is going to be medicinal in more than just the food it's offering. It's going to evoke precious memories for me. I'll, when I'll have this hot sauce, I will, you know, I'll be in my garden in the sunshine in the summer. And so that's one of the most beautiful things about working with these foods. Okay, so now we need enough brine to blend it to a sauce. You know, you want about an inch in the bottom there. And now is when you can start adding all sorts of weird things. You could add, if you like the smoky flavor, you could add smoked paprika. You know, if you, you could add dill or thyme or oregano or cumin or you can add anything to spice it up. Today, I have something very weird and actually really special as well. I've got, so this is the very last of my fermented honey garlic. I always like adding honey to my hot sauces. It gives it a viscosity, but like when you put it on the food, it really coats your food and it sticks on there. So this is the very last of my fermented honey garlic. So this is literally garlic fermented in the honey there's not much of the honey left because it's it's actually so good. But this is going to add a little bit of sweetness as well as this really nice garlic, uh, some nice garlic flavor in there. To me, in the recipes I gave everyone, I gave you the process to make the honey garlic. It's so easy. And uh, actually brought, I've got another kind of variation of that recipe. So... Literally, you're fermenting garlic in honey. And it's so easy. You're just pouring honey over garlic. And the moisture that's in the garlic uh, starts to ferment. So it's not something you do in a sealed jar. You want to let the gases escape in this process. So I brought another variation on the recipe here to show you the process. These are my honey fermented cranberries. So... It's so cool. The honey actually gets infused with the garlic, or in this case, the essence of cranberry. And the cranberries become really useful too afterwards. They're so yummy. Um, so basically, yeah, you just pour the, the honey over your ingredient. You can use blueberries. You can do, you can do this with many different ingredients. But now it's going to be fermenting. So it's another thing. You check it every day. I just let, You could just leave the lid on loose. But you see how all the cranberries are floating here. The garlic does the same thing. So every day, you can do it twice a day, you do a flip. Uh -huh. And you, you just want to coat all the ingredients with honey again so that Nothing is floating that gets exposed to the air for too long. So yeah, I keep flipping that. Generally, you let it go two weeks, and then you can start using it. I've had people's honey garlic that is a year old. They just let the process keep going and going. Oh, so this is going to be really good. The cranberries, honey, I'm going to use it to like drizzle on food, like a garnish, if you could imagine a nice red honey syrup. Also, it's amazing in tea. You can just take some, you have a nice cranberry tea. The honey garlic, you take some anytime you feel you got like a cold or sore throat. I, I gave most of mine away to, to kids, people, parents that I knew whose kids had colds and they said that it worked like a charm. It's a miracle worker. Okay, we're ready to blend this up. So let's give it a whirl, shall we? And see what's going on. Ah, the trusty workhorse of the Vitamix. Ho, ho, ho. Let's, okay, let's see what's happening here. Woo! You can do it. Oh. 
That was the garlic kicking up. Oh, yeah. Students best. That's probably like the perfect quantity of uh, brine that you want to be able to to blend it really well. So if you're not a achieving a good vortex, you want to add a little more juice to your blender. Yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, a couple of questions Woo! coming in around the uh, honey garlic uh, oh, yeah. ferment. So just to catch everyone up, we do actually have, uh, there's at least two videos we've done uh, on oh, that yeah. process. So one that Denis and I did a couple years ago. <laughs> Look at that, hey? Wow, nice it done. smells amazing. Uh, so if you just go on to say Late Cellar YouTube, you can find those tutorials. Yeah. And it's literally just cranberries or just garlic or whatever you want into yeah. honey. Nothing and else And it's added. in the recipes uh, we sent out tonight for the hot sauce. Oh, totally. Okay. And then it's and, also uh, in your recipe. Yeah, we'll booklet. make sure to forward you that, uh, that recipe. Okay, I'm going to give it a taste here. So, of course, this is more to be used like a condiment, but... I know Malcolm sometimes likes to add this stuff to his hot chocolates and stuff, his elixirs. So let's give it a little taste. Oh, all right, it is phenomenally good. Woo. Holy. So when you're now, it's the time to bottle your uh, hot sauce. Um, you know, I like little cute ones like that. Maple syrup bottles are pretty sweet. Something that pours really good and easily. But I like these beer, these flip top beer bottles because I guess I got a few of them. Hmm. Okay. Might take a little while here to get in there. You could also, if you want a finer and smoother consistency, you could pass this through one of those, like, uh, you know those old, like, the j they would make jam in these, like, strange devices where you pass and it leaves all the seeds behind? You could pass this through one of those things and get a, a smoother consistency. Or even if you wanted, you could pass it through a sieve and then you'll get something more, like, this sauce, which I call it the fermented sriracha. So this one is pure chili peppers with honey. So the honey, I really love to have the honey in there for one for viscosity because you wanna you want this to like coat your food, but also that sweet flavor really balances out all the the spiciness and the sourness so there's so many variations you could have here so i call it the sriracha it's really smooth oh geez you don't want to play too much with that one so that's pure scotch bonnet pepper so if i was gonna do that hot sauce challenge on someone malcolm we were gonna maybe try that today make malcolm cry on camera this would be the one I would place as the final spiciest sauce. So you can you can calibrate your the amount of spice you have with the type of peppers you use. This one was one that I tried to make uh, at home without a blender. <laughs> it turned into more of a salsa, but that's actually that was the leftovers of when I passed this stuff through just a sieve and it, I called it a honey garlic salsa and it's so yummy. 
I just add that on. So that's the more fibrous stuff. That's your saucy stuff. There's so many options you can do here. This one is a carrot. This is a fermented carrots hot sauce. So this one is on the milder side. I'll probably, I'd say that's the mildest one we've got. And then this is a pure, this is another pure chili pepper. I think that's just the red Thai chilies fermented pure. And so <laughs> that's one we call the boss fermented hot sauce. Uh, at the light cellar here, the ferment team cannot believe how much hot sauce we actually sell around here. I guess it's addictive. It's sensational, if you will. <laughs> um, I would say that's our second spiciest of the night. And this, this because of this having so much of the green tomatoes in it, this one's actually not that spicy. I would probably put that on a, you know, I don't know, four or five on the scale. <laughs> All right. Is there any other questions coming in there? Yeah. Sure. We'll let the questions roll in. Uh, one thing that did come up, uh, speak to us in regards to adding vinegar. Oh, yes. Okay. So adding vinegar is a great way to make sure your hot sauces do not explode. So these are living ferments, right? So you do have to keep them in the fridge once they're done. But yeah, we've definitely had occasions where we've made a hot sauce and it literally ended up on the roof when uh, we opened it. it kind of dangerous. If It was kind of dangerous. But adding a little bit of apple cider vinegar at this stage, so you could add like a cup of vinegar into the into the mix. I would. This is especially if you're this. They'll only explode if there's still uh, fermentation occurring. So I wasn't too afraid for this one because I had let it ferment for so long. But yeah, adding like a cup of vinegar to your your blender full of hot sauce will probably guarantee that you're not going to have an explosive product. Yeah, it really just slows down the fermentation. It drops the acidity, uh, and you can play with that percentage, Ooh. but it's about 20% you can add to essentially alter the pH of the hot sauce enough that those lactobacillus organisms, mm -hmm. it's actually too sour for them to really grow and thrive. So it's, it's one way without pasteurizing it or perpetually refrigerating it to kind of slow the fermentation down because yeah, there has been a couple that have been explosively <laughs> <laughs> hot yeah. coming, bursting through the jar. Yeah. It's a, uh... I guess it's part of the fermentation experiment experience. Uh, the Lord only knows how many explosive ferments I've opened in my life. <laughs> or caused people to open. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm just going to give it a nice label here. Yeah. Labels are always important. The green tomato hot sauce and... Uh, Okay, great question about what type of vinegars. Oh yeah, I would use an apple cider vinegar or something like that. Yeah, live live culture vinegar. Um, yeah, I uh, mentioned last night, or maybe I didn't. I was thinking about it last night. Where every ferment fest, I try and come up with a new recipe and challenge for me to kind of take on and teach. And so last year was doing vinegars, and I did a whole bunch of all different kinds of variations, uh, flavored vinegars, whew. making them from scratch. And yeah, you can get really creative with vinegars, but kind of easiest, simplest would be uh, an apple cider. Okay, well, I, you know, I really hope that everyone sees how easy this is. Literally, it's just salt and water, ingredients and time. And that's, I guess this is one of the major reasons we really lost fermentation. Hey, Malcolm was, we started making all these hot sauces uh, with just vinegar, no fermentation, just to save time and to make a shelf-stable product where you didn't need 
to refrigerate them, but you're losing out on all the probiotic benefits. So literally, I believe a tablespoon of this is similar to the amount of probiotics you'd get in a sauerkraut. So as Sasha was talking about yesterday, one tablespoon of this can have trillions of probiotic organisms, which is far more than you'd get in, in probiotic capsules. So fascinating, fascinating stuff. Yeah, so we got some great comments here. Dana's saying, hmm, Christmas presents. Yeah, totally. Get yourself some little jars like that. Or uh, yeah. if you have something really spicy, even a littler. <laughs> do, yeah, do up some nice labels. And yeah, get started on it now. You can absolutely have these ready to go for Christmas. For uh... You know, I really wanted to get into chili peppers a little bit more as a medicinal herb because... It's the truth of all vegetables. They're healing. Chili peppers are a medicinal herb. So we talked a little bit about their circulatory stimulant action. They can make you sweat. They can improve digestion. But there's another third fascinating aspect of chili peppers. And it's actually the, the medicinal compound called capsicum. That this is the very spicy compound found in chili peppers. What we're discovering about capsicum, it's actually a compound related to vanilloids. So this word vanilloid means literally that it's related to opioids in a way. It interacts with the part of our brain that uh, interacts with opioids. So chili peppers have this fascinating ability to numb pain. They're pain killing. So it is probably one of the reasons people love them. And apparently, if you're someone who's gone through... Um, any kind of uh, addiction to painkillers, the, the, there's a, in most, uh, what I understand is people that are recovering from this become addicts to hot sauce because it's actually interacting with the same part of our brain that has this pain killing effect. So what a fascinating herb, fascinating. And there's a reason it's spread across the world and you would not realize what Thai cuisine was without chili peppers before you would not realize what Indian cuisine was before chili peppers you would not realize what Chinese cuisine was like without chili peppers so what a fascinating fascinating substance a true All hero right. So we've got uh, a couple more questions. So Jody asks, how important is sanitizing versus just clean? Oh, yeah. I mean, so generally with all my bottles, I'll use white vinegar to clean them or sterilize them. This is the fascinating thing about fermented and fermentation is that when you are encouraging these probiotic bacteria they're the ones that actually are sanitizing and making the food safe to eat. This is why in medieval Europe, they drank beer instead of water because the fermentation process made the water safe to drink. The, the beneficial organisms are actually top predators in the microbiological world. So they they actually make the water safe to drink. It's very cool. All right, another question. Uh, so Connie froze some of hot peppers uh, they grew this summer. Can they be used or do the hot peppers have to be dried or fresh? So oh. frozen or previously frozen hot peppers? I'm sure that's fine. Yeah, I would, I would say so as well. Yeah, totally. I'm sure that's fine, yeah. I'm going to be keeping that in my, now I'm going to keep this in my fridge and I guess it's a party anytime you uh, come to my place. <laughs> Woo! All right. Going to have some salsa. 
So we're not done yet. We got all good kinds of good comments. Jen oh, saying yeah. it makes me wonder why I'm not doing this more. Absolutely, all these things, right? The ferments, incredible, so easy. And then we've got uh, Stephanie saying, I imagine Denise fridge at home to look oh. like a masking <laughs> taped apothecary. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think. Uh, I forget last time I cleaned it out, but I think I have eighty. Last time I cleaned my fridge out, I had eighty different jars of various. <laughs> strange ferments uh which it's like a library For that's sure. it's kind of fun fermentation library yeah totally okay and then uh we are uh we're getting some dares so oh geez can can you handle a tablespoon of your hot sauce okay oh geez uh and uh i'm, I'm being called on on and up for this one too. okay this is what we wanted to we wanted to Okay, let's start from mild. Let's work yeah. our way up here. Okay, so this is probably my mildest one. So this is was green jalapenos and red bell peppers with some honey. Okay. And no, no big deal. No big deal. What I call the <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's get you started there, Malcolm. This is this is honestly I'll sometimes just cut an avocado in half. Yeah. And put the hot sauce right in that hole where the Okay, you joining me or are you? Oh watching yeah, me? yeah. <laughs> okay, let's get started here. Someone will have to speak after this here. Yeah. Okay, this is most likely gonna totally clean us out too. That's you can see that just being just beautiful in there. Chili peppers are also incredibly rich in vitamin C. Right. So amazing yeah, totally. for immunity, but they're also expectorant. It it would appear that that has something to do with the circulatory stimulant action. It like brings circulation to any congestion or stagnation. So yeah, I'm sure you all know what it's like. You start to hork expect to expectorate. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it's so fascinating when you're mentioning about uh, these oh opioid like substances because it's really curious yes. like people who love hot sauce mm. love hot sauce you know you, you develop a taste for it it's almost this kind of love affair this, this type of addiction and, uh, <laughs> okay i think i might outlast this contest here. <laughs> <laughs> you're taking your time and you're sweating on that one but i suppose to be fair you've you've already had a few tastes so yeah. your mouth is already warmed up okay so which, which one's, one's next? next i mean yeah, on the scale do you want to taste the well, that sounds like that's going. Oh, to that's gonna be the hottest one. Okay, let's try one. the green tomato one. <laughs> okay, let's do it. Which uh, is not green. I have yet to achieve like a real green hot sauce. Those ones you see in the Mexican restaurants, they're just all full of green coloring, green food coloring. Yeah. All right, so that's your uh, green tomatoes from Denise Garden. Okay. Mmm, that smells really good. Yeah. Okay, that's up up a level on the heat. Yeah, you could add some more honey in there if you wanted it to. Yeah. If you wanted it to be to balance the sweet and the sour flavor. Okay, I'm going going for it. <laughs> All right, I'm mm. still in the game. Still in the game. No, that one's quite mild. Yeah. Yeah. Do you detect the tomato green tomato flavor? It's like that sour. Okay, yeah, yeah, it's interesting. I the reference point Whew. there. All right, it comes All and right. gets you and it sneaks up on you. This one, yeah, and uh, and to be honest, like you know, as much as I love Ooh. hot sauce, I, I do prefer the milder hot sauces because then you can really appreciate the flavors mm. versus just the burn <laughs> 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 and the euphoria that comes with that. The euphoria, yeah, the altered state, yeah. Okay, hey, Malcolm. All right, this is it. This one's the spiciest one we've got on the table. The Scotch bonnet. The Scotch bonnets. They look like habaneros. Yeah. I don't know if it's the same thing. But yeah, it's definitely one of those ones that's been bred to be the spiciest thing in the world. All right. Woo! Whoa. So is this... <laughs> Suicide? Uh, <laughs> going that well, much let's see. Well, I guess so. Let's see what's going on. 
Oh, what a what a aroma. This would be the final chicken wing. <laughs> okay, you just sipped it first. I'm just gonna like watch the beads of sweat form <laughs> on your brow first. Ooh, okay, I'm, yeah. I'm going in. This is the triple alarm. Well, I can tell already. Yeah. Fire oh. it up. Oh. oh. <laughs> our our crew is laughing at us. <laughs> Woo! Mm. All right. I think you guys can kind of feel what's <laughs> happening here to us. Oh, but it's yeah. good. It's you know, delicious. I, I have this interesting phenomenon uh, that whenever I have something like actually really hot, uh, I get hiccups. Uh, it helps me every single time. <laughs> yeah. So it's okay. We achieved Malcolm getting hiccups. Yeah, it's kind of the, uh, the measure, the standard. I'm having my... Forget Scoville units. It's actually hiccup uh, units now. I'm definitely seeing my mucous membranes, like, I don't know, shedding. <laughs> <laughs> it seems to be working on us. <laughs> it is, absolutely. Yeah, the, al uh, the altered state is beginning. <laughs> my vision has become... Hot pepper hilarity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow, well, that was awesome. I, I'm glad everyone can really see that. This is an easy way to have fun at home. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, we're doing good. Yeah, we're doing great. Um, very, I see uh, staff Christmas party, you mm. know, 2020. It's one of the reasons kimchi is so popular around the world is I guess people kind of like to punish themselves. So <laughs> I think we've achieved an adrenal response where the body kind of thinks you're dying. <laughs> is that, is that, <laughs> is that <laughs> so that yeah, it's like fight or flight. I'm going to survive. <laughs> My right. brain is flooding with endorphins. So we're feeling good. Yeah. It's a, uh, that's amazing. Well, um, this is just one of the ways you can have fun with these kind of ferments at home. Oh. Fun with ferments. Yeah. Right. Have we got any more questions uh, coming in over there? Or? Go check it out. They're enjoying the show, hey? <laughs> okay, I'm going for another scoop. It's going to be fun. Whoa. Admittedly, it's better to use fats to calm this down. Not water, so just be very careful with this stuff. Mmm. Ah, delectable. <laughs> Delicious. All, All right. right. Well, that kind of wraps it up for tonight. Eh? I, yeah, I trust everyone's been having a really good time uh, getting these practical <laughs> skills. <laughs> Getting these practical skills. Um, it's the whole reason we're doing this. All right. We want people to start doing this at home. So send us some photos of your hot sauces. Yeah, the, the before and the after. Bring some over for me to taste them. Because that's one of that's one of the coolest things about doing these workshops is people bringing us presents. <laughs> it's always really nice to taste. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> I guess um, we're looking forward to tomorrow. It's going to be another um, super fun day of the fermentation festival. Yeah, we're going uh, kind of Asian uh, Japanese theme tomorrow. Day five. So I think are we starting with Dr. Terry Willard tomorrow? Or we're starting with no Mel with uh, Eli Ross, who from Kiako oh, yeah. Fermentation Wine Auto going to teach us how to make not <laughs> the natto man is going to be here and honestly natto is one of the coolest of the ferments out there yeah he's got so many interesting like facts about natto and the bacillus yeah. subtilis um yeah we'll be learning all about that and oh. then, uh, <laughs> terry willard uh it's going to be joining us from vancouver island and he's going to be talking about quickles yeah. uh, japanese sukumono he sent like a 25 page uh, recipe booklet that you can uh, follow along with so traditional ferments of japan yeah 
quick, easy vegetable ferments. And natto. Yeah. Affectionately dubbed the naughty, naughty natto. <laughs> I guess you're going to find out more about that tomorrow. Yeah. It's uh imagine that. What a combo. Hot sauce and natto. Yeah, it's a uh, crazy this could we get up to that evening, hey? Yeah, it's cons- I'll give you a hint. It is considered a fertility food. Yeah. Oh. All right. Say no more. We'll save it till uh, the next session. <laughs> Thanks everyone for joining us tonight and thank you to Nee. Thank you to J- Julie. <laughs> I brought I brought <laughs> This is where we need the cheese in front of us here to oh, yeah. uh, tone th- things down. Yeah. So. Okay, thanks for tuning in, everyone. Yeah. May the ferments be with you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs>